2024 Jaguar F-Pace SVR. Under the hood, we've got a five liter supercharged V8 that makes 542 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Sounds so good. Rips. This thing rips. Ultra aggressive. Woo, back end comes out nicely. <laughs> this thing is so fun. Lucky guy, you've had this car all week, and I only have a few hours. <sighs> this is the real deal. This is the Jaguar F-Pace SVR. I have food poisoning, but that's not stopping me from bringing this car to your faces. This is one of the best vehicles I've ever driven that feels mechanical, raw, and everything you want out of a vehicle in 2024 that they don't make anymore. Disappointing. Buy one before it's too late. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm driving this vehicle even though I am sick as a dog. I had food poisoning in Brazil and I was not in good shape whatsoever. But Ian's like, man, you have to drive this thing. It is so aggressive. It's so aggressive. It just reminds me of that Saturday night I was throwing up like crazy. It's like, bah, bah, bah. those sounds will just never leave my mind. They're so etched. And Ian's right. That's what you get when you get this Jaguar. Listen. So aggressive! There's not many vehicles we bring into our studio that looks good at every angle. Now, as I walk around this, I can't see one that looks out of place, out of sorts. This Jaguar F-Pace SVR is really good for the money. Now I know you must be thinking, it's a lot of money. With a starting price of about 93,000 US, and this one's 109,000 Canadian dollars, that's actually priced very well, considering that this engine is a masterpiece, albeit an old one. You know what makes me sad? The fact that Jaguar is no longer making gas vehicles in 2025. Yep. EV all the way in 2025 for Jag, which means this 2024 is no longer gonna be with us in 2025. Interestingly enough, on Jaguar Canada's website, you do have the option to build a 2025. Now, this is going to be a special edition called the 575, which will, you know, have 575 horsepower. And no other brand makes something like this. The Gurkhali is a six. The BMW X, 3M is a 6. The Porsche Macan GTS is a 6. Now some people will say, well no, it's an X5M competitor and the answer is definitely not. This is a small vehicle, look at it. It's not large. Which means if you want to buy something like this, just open up that checkbook and cut a check for this. Because if you don't, Ian, are you gonna buy one of these? All right, let's zero to 60 test this F-Pace SVR. I've got everything in dynamic. I've got the gear shifter back for S instead of drive. And all right, we're holding the brake down. We are going to launch this thing. Let's go. Dynamic launch activated. <laughs> oh, it's so fast. 3.82. That is the fastest time I've been able to get. I did it a few seconds ago and got 3.85. 3.82 is pretty insane. This thing is violent. It sounds louder outside. Which is different because all these cars today are four cylinders and six cylinder engines and they sound louder inside because it's all fake sound coming through the speakers. There's nothing fake about this car.
Alright, the Jaguar F-Pace SVR goes just a bit faster than a BMW Z4 M40i and just a little bit slower than a Genesis GV70 Electrified. Now in comparison to the competition, which are six cylinder engines, the BMW X3M can hit 60 in about 3.7 seconds, and it costs around the same as the Jag, however we found it to be a little bit stiff for everyday use. The Macan GTS is about 3.5 seconds, but once you start loading up options on the Porsche, it gets insanely expensive fast. The Maserati Grecali Trofeo will do 3.5 seconds as well, but it's priced at $133,000 Canadian. Now if you want a supercharged V8 in an SUV, you could look at a Dodge Durango Hellcat, but even it's more expensive. The twin turbo V8 on the BMW X5M will cost you about $144,000 Canadian just starting. Even an Audi RS Q8 is $150,000 Canadian. So for a supercharged V8, the F-Pace SVR is truly a bargain. Aluminum pieces. You do have functional hood vents and a massive black grille with a monochromatic Jaguar emblem with a camera right above it and a massive front mouth that if you are driving and you see this behind you, you're moving out of the way. Ho, 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 this is what I want for Christmas. With its 15.6 inch brakes, its 22 inch wheels that are specific SVR, they are two-tone, they stop this 4,537 pound tank. It has a functional side vent that pulls these front doors inward, creates this crease that looks so Aston Martin DBX-ish. Even the back's beautiful. Let's start at the top. You've got this small, clean, extra lip Reminds me of the BMW M3 from back in the day. You also have the third brake light that is clear and translucent. I like that as opposed to having it in red like some other manufacturers. And then there's the wiper that should really go underneath here. No idea why they put it there. You have the Jaguar logo. They can get rid of that. Pretty typical stuff. I would just keep this SVR all day long. These taillights are very iconic Jaguar. But the most important piece here are these exhausts. Look at them because now you're about to hear them. Now, one of the first vehicles we shot that killed on the channel but got my heart was the Velar SVA Autobiography. That vehicle was a beast. And this is exactly the same feeling I get out of jumping in here today. You've got everything you need to feel premium. You've got a solid looking dash. By materials only, let's talk about it. You've got suede or alcantara. You've got real leather. You have aluminium. You've got another trim piece there with ambient lighting that changes color based on the drive modes you have on. You have a two touch steering wheel. You've got this perforations on the top. You have soft leather on the inside and you have stitching to mix it all together. You have SVR on the bottom of your steering wheel, but also you have SVR on the crest of your headdress including the front as well as the back, have these little inlets on the seats, which makes you feel that you could put a five-point harness in because you're going to need it when you drive this thing. It is monstrous. Anyways, let's start off with the most important piece here and the fact that this screen doesn't like to work all the time because it is a Jaguar after all. You have three increments of memory seat. You have, of course, on all four corners, automatic windows that do this up and this down. They're nice and thick, which keeps you insulated from the outside humans. And if you're wondering if this eight-speed transmission has paddle shifters, well, of course, the answer is yes, and they are real metal. Listen, they are not plastic whatsoever. You're gonna use them, and you're gonna use them a lot. All right, we got it to work. This 11.4 inch screen is actually really good. We've had this before on other Range Rover products. Really good layout, easy to use. I love the softness of the colors that it puts out. It's just like light, soft beige, which is really popular when you paint your house nowadays. Gray is out the door, beige is in the house. Very easy to use, slide left, slide right, love it. 
Moving down from there, you have the Jaguar, established in 1935 in Coventry. Anyways, you have this pull, pull, that is how you adjust your heated and cooled seats. You push for your HVAC, for the temperature that you want to have in the cabin, pretty straightforward stuff. From there, you have a nice big open area for your wireless charger, love it. From there, you have SVR on the shifter, you have your different drive modes, and then you have your start and stop and your volume control. Very easy to use. This is done with perfection. Thumbs up, Jaguar. From there, I do have this little thing I pull back, and that is where you have a cigarette plug where you have to have, I assume, USBs, because where else are there? They ain't here. They're probably underneath here. Bingo. You have a USB, a USB-C, and a pretty small storage compartment. And then how about this, the padding? Well, to be honest, this is pretty weak when it comes to Jaguar. This should be nice and thick, like it should be. This is an expensive vehicle. And even if it wasn't an expensive vehicle, just add like $10 to the price and put some padding in here because people need their elbows to be safe when they get older because that's who's buying Jaguars. Back seat of the F pace. Very solid door. What do you expect? It's a Jaguar. Jaguar. Very thick seats. What do you expect? It's a Jaguar. It's a Jaguar. Cool part though, these seats are basically replicas of the front seats. Check this out. This is really cool. This is very, very, very cool because the kids back here will feel like their parents up front. Like they're worth it, that they belong. That's what Jaguar folks are all about. Two USB-Cs, a cigarette plug lighter, and increments of heated seats. Three of them, I think. Half the stuff doesn't work here when the car's not running, so I can't tell you, but I assume there are three because I don't sit back here. That's for the kids. Let's see how much room you have in your Jaguar F-Pace. You have 44 inches worth of width. As far as depth goes, you have 13.9 and three quarters, almost a 40. And in terms of height, well, it depends if you have this tunnel cover or panel on or not. If you do, you have about 20. If you don't, you have about 32. Now, if you're wondering why Jaguar would give you one of these, but also paint it with one of those, it's because you are rich. And rich people do not change tires. You have that to remind yourself I can't be poor. I have to replace it with what I'm driving, which is one of those. Now the seat's full 60-40 and you do have a manual pull here that when you pull it, that seat does slide forward. And then this one does as well. When I pull it, it is 60-40 as you can see right there. It folds fairly flat. It's not full flat, but it's a fair flat. I will show you right here when I stick my head in. It is fairly flat. All right, just before we jump into the drive here, if I was getting an F-Pace SVR, I would definitely get it in this British racing green color. I think that looks awesome. I would still get the blacked out rims and the roof rails, just like the one we're reviewing has. And then I would probably get this in the light oyster interior color. I think that looks pretty snazzy. However, noticing now that it is $10,600 for British racing green, I might settle for ultra blue because it's free. So yeah, how would you spec your F-Pace SVR? Let me experience good times. I will put it in dynamic. Put my foot to the ground, dynamic mode confirmed, and let's launch this puppy. rips using the paddle shifters in this car is very addicting and they've got this crazy little flashing animation on the driver's display that is just taunting you to break the speed limit so while we're looking at the driver's display there you can see we're getting 15.2 liters per hundred kilometers and that's including like highway driving I know I'm ripping it hard here but there's at least 200 kilometers of highway driving on there this F-Pace did have the lane keeping feature, which doesn't really work that well in the city. It mostly just bounces you off the line. It works differently on the highway, however, and it actively steers to keep you in the lane. It's not as confidence inspiring as other brands like say Genesis, but you don't really buy these cars for this kind of technology. In terms of overall comfort, seats are pretty good. They are firm. If you like firm seats, you'll like these seats. 
I did do a two hour drive from Toronto back to London to bring this car back and my back was a little sore by the end of it. Other stuff, CarPlay works really good. It is wireless. Other Land Rover products we've had, it's been a little glitchy, but this, this one's been great. Mike's probably gone over the HVAC controls by now and I don't really like how you use the same button for fan speed and heated seats, cooled seats. However, we are getting the new Velar next week and they've completely erased all the buttons except for the gear shifter. So I'm happy with what I've got. Now, if you haven't driven Jaguar product before, the windshield is heated, which means you have these small, tiny lines in it. So I would always suggest anybody before buying a Jaguar to sit in it and drive it for about five minutes because there are some people that actually do get slight headaches from these lines. Now, I will tell you over time, it does go away. You get more used to it. But just initially, if you're not used to it, it seems like there's something in the windshield, but you just looked right past it. Now, the only complaint I could find in this Jaguar is this trim right here. This aluminum trim reflects the sun right into your face. You need to have glasses when you wear this or sunjis because this is like all brightness. Like, look, it's like right in my face. I put my hand there, it's not there anymore. I take my hand away, boom, right in my face. Not in my face, in my face. Not in my face, in my face. Face, not face, face, face. Jaguar, you should know better. Driving this around in eco mode, this is a very bumpy road and it's taking them pretty good. It's not as stiff as the X3M competition. That was a lot stiffer and you'd feel every bump in your body. The F-Pace SVR does have an electronically controlled limited slip differential. It has a double wishbone front suspension with coil springs and it has a multi-link rear suspension with coil springs. The SVR has adaptive dampers which make for a pretty comfortable ride and it actually makes it a pretty easy vehicle to live with. All right, so I'm gonna put the car into eco mode now so we can hear how quiet it is in this vehicle. I am in an open field, basically. Not many trees. It's quiet. It's really windy today, so it's really good cabin insulation. Not too many creeks or anything in here. I haven't really heard any creeks, to be honest. All right, turning radius, time. Turning radius, time. It's dope. This is great. It's amazing. That's it's a really good turning radius. It doesn't even have rear wheel steering in it. Did that with ease. It truly is a shame that Jaguar is basically just going to go full EV and scrap all these V8s. So I feel pretty lucky to be able to drive this before it's completely gone. <laughs> this car is so fun. Oh, I needed this. Thanks, Jag. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. So it's safe to say that Mike and I both love driving this SVR. It's classy looking, it's outrageously quick, and it's just a fun vehicle to drive. This is what a performance SUV was meant to be. Rapidly fun, while still providing the comforts of luxury. That is this review on this Jaguar F-Pace SVR. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you don't mind that I subbed in for Mike while he's not feeling so great. Anyways, yeah, catch you on the next one.